There it is. Go. It'll go away when you write up to them. Okay. So we have to remember that there is a constant there. It might be zero, it might be something else. Uh, there's also, uh, we could say there is a particular solution or an initial condition. Those are both pretty much the same thing. Uh, so if I told you that this, this derivative, okay, let me, or this antiderivative, I'm just gonna put big F of x, right? I'll, I'll test you. Okay, so there's this big F of x, okay? which we use to represent the antiderivative, that function inside there, that, f, that 4x squared plus 6x squared minus 1, is that big F of x? That's, that's a little f. Prime. Little f. Little f. Yeah. Okay, yeah. We, could, we could just as easily say f prime, Ow. and then call the other one f. It's just a common notation to say that's little f there, and big F is the antiderivative, right, going the other way. Because the derivative is its own function, we say the antiderivative of It's just a thing that we do in the calculus. So uh, if I told you that big F of 2 was 7, right, then I'm telling you that if you put in 2 for x, you should get 7 for y, and that means you could find out what c is, right? Yeah. Agree? Question? Okay. Um, I was about to quiz. What if we both didn't put c? But we uh, remember <laughs> now. <laughs> well, we're, we promise you remember. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to take, like, on the tests, not on the quizzes, not on the homework recaps, but on the tests, I'm going to take a little bit off. That's okay. Why? Because it's important. It's important, at the very least. We can't have to read. I'm just saying. At the very, it's a big question. At the very least, it, it, it is on, you lose credit on the AP test if you don't put plus. Okay. It is important. It's important to remember there is a plus, some constant. Okay. So. Uh, good. Any any other questions, comments? As long as it's not about Disney World and taking a field trip. It's about math. Okay. <laughs> 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 um, do you do as an alternate test if we don't take the AP test? Uh, no. That's just kind of like, I don't know. I see that as, Susan, is it like punishment? Because I don't give you a grade in this class for taking the AP test. I know other AP teachers that I really love do that. I love all the AP teachers. To debate them. No, I, I love them all. You don't have to debate whether I love them. Okay, uh, questions, comments about this problem, or what do you think is very like this problem? Yeah. Uh, question about this chapter. Oh, yeah. On a scale of like 1 to 5, how do you close the situation after this? This is a 1? This is a 1. What's the definition? I guess it's going to get as hard as it's going to get, so it's going to get to a 5? No, 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 no. no. Like, that wasn't a 10. No. Like, 5 was like when we were doing like super imaginary numbers and like trigonometric functions. We had the whole like thing that we were doing. Like, it was like the Uh, finding <laughs> antiderivatives, 
Um, <laughs> <laughs> it'll be. I can't remember if it's this chapter or chapter. This is just like middle, like we're in the middle. The reason why is because we don't know how to take very many antiderivatives. We can take the antiderivatives of what kinds of functions? I'm asking you that. Exponential. Mm -hmm. Exponential means x is in the exponent. Oh, ones with power. Ones with power, so x has a power. Yeah. Okay, so polynomials, power functions, not exponential functions, but power functions. Okay, so. Uh, we can do that, but we can't do the, like quotient rule is a quotient rule. There's like there's very little that we can do. We can do the reverse of the power rule, right? Where the power rule for derivatives is bring down the power, and multiply, and take one away. So we're gonna bring the power up one and then divide by that power. Okay. Um, and then we can do some trig functions. <coughs> it's like maybe four, maybe four kinds of antiderivatives. And remember for sine. Cosine, and, and maybe two other, like secant tangent and secant squared, are derivatives of some of functions, right? Yeah. So, and then power functions. We just don't have a lot of know-how yet. So, if we break it down into uh, a polynomial or a bunch of power functions, uh, we can do this. So, x squared over x to the fourth becomes x to the negative of the second. Negative two. That's not what I meant to write down. Plus. There we go. Plus what? Two. two. X to the X. Or three. Yeah. Three. three. One minus four. Minus three. 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 X. X. The negative four. The negative four. We got the dx. It's very important. This is going to make a lot more sense today. 
Okay, this dx thing. Okay. Uh, oh, we don't we don't need that simple anymore because we're about to take the antiderivative and what is it? What is the antiderivative? This is the antiderivative of this. Negative x to the negative first minus. Whoa, 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 just this one. Uh, just negative x to the negative one. Negative x to the negative one? Yep. Let's yeah. just check ourselves as we move along, okay? Yeah. Negative one times negative is positive. That's good. Positive one. Subtract one. Negative two. Good. Let's move on. Right? <laughs> Yay! Minus what? X to the negative second. X to the negative second. Negative x to the negative. Let's just double check. Negative two times negative is two, positive two. We'll subtract one, you get negative three. Excellent, now we move on. Plus x to the negative third. Plus x to the negative third. Bring down the three times negative, or the negative three times positive, negative three, great. Uh, subtract one from the power, we get negative four. Plus c. Plus c, very important to put plus c. Yeah, plus c really gets me. Yeah. Maybe write it flat. Question? Do we have Here's the secret about the AP test. If your answer can simply be simplified or rewritten, uh, and it's equivalent to the correct answer, like that is the official answer, then it's, then it's right. right. Um, so that can be a good and a bad thing. You, it has to. You have to be able to just simplify the answer down to the, the official answer. But if you have to, if there's more than simplification that has to be done, then it's not correct. Okay. So this would be correct. This would be the same as having. Uh, negative one over x minus one over x squared. Yeah, or even finding a common denominator and adding them all together. That's another option that you could take. So any of those options. <coughs> um, but once they have to start like substituting numbers in for x, or you know, like there's certain things that count, certain things that will be counted wrong. But this would be correct. This would be fine. And for me, this is fine because this is this is the same thing. Even if I write it as as Aaron said, or if I find a common common denominator and add all these fractions together, it's it's all the same. Right? It gives me the exact same value if I plug in x. Um, and the important thing is that you could do it. You could simplify it. If you have difficulty simplifying it, start practicing simplifying it. Because sometimes you just need to be able to do that. So for one, the thing that comes up the most is if you have a multiple choice answer, and they have something different from what you have, and, and your answer looks like none of those answers should try and simplify it down to what they have. So if you can't do it, you should start doing it so that you can simplify uh, anyway, um, those are a couple of examples. Questions? Other questions from the homework? I heard at least one. Uh, the, uh, oh, 46. 46. Yeah, oh, yeah. Just, just that one. Yeah, I got all of them. Oh, let's see. Uh, insert page after. This is where they give us a graph of f prime. We're supposed to draw an f. We've done this before, but that's not to say that it's Okay, so this is f prime. Let's just do f in another color, the blue. All right. So what does f prime tell us about f? It's slope. Okay. What is the slope of f here? Zero. Zero. Close to zero. Close to zero. So what are we about the original function? What's the only thing we really know about the original function? It's supposed to be because I need to. Uh, I think I need to draw this graph a little better. Horizontal. Wait, hold on. Hold on. My bad. No. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. I'm not, I really need to be more active than this. Okay. So the value of the of the derivative right now is zero because it's close to the x-axis, right? If I were to plug in x 
over here I get a, a y of like one half or one fourth. Something small, right? So it has this tiny, tiny slope. What does the zero slope look like? Horizontal, okay? So over here we've got this horizontal slope. Now, think about this. This is where this plus c comes in, okay? I can have a flat slope here. I can also have a flat slope here. I can have a flat slope down here, flat slope down here. It doesn't tell me where the original function is. It just tells me that the slope is what? Zero or close to zero. Getting closer and closer to zero. So we just have to pick. I'll pick here, okay? Um, let's look right. It looks like there's this asymptote right here. Like yeah. So what's up with the slope here? It's a big, big slope, right? Uh -huh. What's a big slope look like? Close to approaching vertical. <coughs> right? So actually the original function, and these are, are smaller slopes, right? A slope of like maybe one right here, because the y value is one. And there's a slope of one there. Uh, so we need to have a slope of right, up one and over one at that point. And then here we need to have these big slopes. This is very, very slanty. Okay? The thing that can be misleading here is that it almost looks like the slopes of the of that prime match up with the slopes of f is not the case, right? The y value of f prime tells us the slope of f. Okay, so here we go through a, a slope of one. Why? Because this has a y value of one, and big big values right going up to toward, towards infinity. So our slopes are getting bigger, closer and closer to the vertical. <coughs> um, okay. See what kind of slopes are we seeing here? Uh, it's getting close, closer, to closer, to zero. closer to zero. But what kinds of slopes are they? Negative. Oh, um, zero. Horizontal. Are they positive or negative slopes? They go to negative. You're looking at the slope of f prime. But what about f prime tells us the slope of the original function? The y value. What kind of y value? It's positive, so the slope should be. So almost zero, but still positive, right? So like this, right? Slightly up and to the right, okay? What about the slopes here? The y value of it is very big. Yeah. Big slopes, big positive slopes. Yeah. Steep and from bottom left to top right, rising. Okay. So very similar to this, only And then uh, we have maybe a slope of one here as well. So a slope, this looks believable, like you can pass through there. So very steep, and then a one, and then a zero, but all positive slopes. Okay. In reality, this could be down here. It could be up here. Like this tells me absolutely nothing about where this other part of the function is. Right? What is that plus c? Don't know. It only tells me the slopes. It does not tell me the y value of the original function. Okay? So whether I have these two parts like this, which is kind of normal and horizontal, uh, asymptote, vertical asymptote, hyperbola, right? or it could be like this. Could be weird, maybe a, you can call that a slant asymptote, probably has a horizontal asymptote. Okay? Uh, if I put it like this, <coughs> The, I could move this whole blue function up and down to me. Uh -huh. And I don't know what this plus c is. It might be plus 5, it might be plus 0, it might be minus 12. So this blue part could be up and down wherever I want because all the slopes still match up. Okay. And I also heard 49. Right? Or am I wrong? Actually, I should. Uh, uh, I think there's already. Yeah. Here's 49. Let me capture that.
Can someone explain what the slope field is, what it means? Yeah. There's some function out there, let's call it y. Okay. Well, what they're telling us about y is that this is, well, how is this related to y? It's the derivative. It's the derivative. And what does the derivative tell us about the original function? The slope. So we go in here and we just draw the slopes of the function because we know the value of the slope mm -hmm. because the derivative tells us the value of the slope, right? So we come to say uh, 3 comma 3. 3 comma 3. Okay. This is 3 comma 3. X is 3, Y is 3. Right? So to find the value of the slope, I plug it in here. I find that dy dx, so I could say of 3, and x is the only thing that matters here because there's no y value over there that tells me what the slope should be, so uh, 1 half times 3 minus 1, that's 3 halves minus 2 halves in the common denominator, so 1 half. So that's, it's not the y value at this point, but the, the value of the slope. So we go and kind of aim ourselves at up 1 and over 3, so up 1, and over one, two, this would be about three. And I aim at this point, right? One, up one over three. That's how we get this little dash right there. It's just the value of the slope of the original function. <coughs> so this is draw two possible uh, solutions, right? The solution to this differential equation is another function. Another function. Another function that has this as its derivative. Okay. So if it has this as its derivative, it has all these slopes. So let's say that it goes through here, then it needs to have this slope, and then you can see how it's going up. Like it doesn't have to go through these slopes, but it does need to match the, the slope of them. You know, like this. Okay? That's kind of like a parabola or maybe some even degree uh, polynomial. It says including when it goes through the given point. There's the given point, so we'll go through here and we see how we need to have these slopes. It needs to come down flat and out, go through here like this, just get steeper as it goes that way. Okay. So this point is four comma two. So it needs to go through that. Right. So any function that has this as its derivative, when you take the derivative, it needs to come out to be this. So what function could we have? that uh, this will be y. What function will have this as its derivative? One fourth x squared. One fourth x squared. Minus one x. Minus one x. Plus, plus, plus c. Plus c. Right. When we put a point here, we make it go through that point, we're saying c is a known. Right? We just need to find it. How do we find that c? Matter. What? Um, this graph goes to this point. You plug in those points into that thing. Which points? What points? One third five. These. This is one point. You put, put y in. Put this x in, and you should get this y out. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Should get two when you go like when you go one fourth times uh, four squared minus four plus whatever c is. Okay, so this will be 16 divided by 4, that'll be 4 minus 4, which is 0, so c will be 2. So we know that y, that this particular solution right here, is what we call a particular solution or an initial condition, uh, y is equal to 1 half x, or sorry, 1 fourth x squared minus x plus 2. So we have 2. So you take mm -hmm. 2 and we okay. know. So is C always going to be the one? Is C always going to be this thing? Yeah. No, it only happened that way because when we plugged in 4, this happened to come out to be 0. Oh, okay. This comes out to be 1, and we just subtract 1 on both sides, so you'd be 1. Okay. You just want it to work out nicely. Oh, they're so kind. Yeah. They're not actually. We get a small slope that just can't be easy. I guess they could start it off really hard so you don't even understand what you're doing. Okay, let's uh, talk about this as we exit this section and get into the other one. Um, so
So, what does this thing, this symbol, mean to you as you're taking it and kind of I'm the anti-derivative, right? A function that has this as the derivative. Simple enough. Okay, now this has a name that we haven't really talked about, but hey, we can throw it in now, right? Didn't need to know it to do the work. But now we're going to call it by its official name. Okay, it's called the indefinite. Okay, because notice we, we like, we haven't plugged any numbers in there. We're just getting a general, some other function, not actual values. Okay, so the indefinite, it's indefinite integral. So we've done a lot of differential calculus for the derivative, and now we are into integral calculus, finding indefinite and later definite integrals. Right now it's called the indefinite integral. Okay? This is a vocab you're going to want to know. You're going to be asked for the indefinite integral. It just means the yeah, derivative, really, for all uh, intents and purposes. Okay? You may not know what this is called. This thing right here that you're taking the answer derivative of is called the integrand. slow us down <laughs> and that really pressure our schedule. Uh, what does this tell us? What does this tell us? That, yeah, kind of backwards of what you said, that the derivative was taken with respect. Oh, yeah, it's a function of x, it's all the same. Uh, so the derivative was taken, and this is what we got. This is what we got when we took the derivative, and it was taken with respect to x, to x. Okay. That's what it's telling us. I would say maybe this is the most important thing to, to have just on the forefront of your mind, indefinite integral, uh, anti-derivative, same thing. Okay. Not this section, but the next section will know what a uh, definite all right, moving forward, what I want you to do right now is <coughs> that. Okay. If you don't remember, you got at least two other brilliant minds in your group. Do you remember what that thing is? So have a book if you need. Okay. That's x over 3, that's 3 times x over 3 squared times 1 third. Just practice with summation notation. That's all it is. Okay. It's important to be able to do, though. 